Oh, I zoomed in accidentally. Nobody wants that. Good morning, everybody. I thought I would do something different today and just kind of vlog because I haven't vlogged in a while and maybe you guys want to see it, what my kind of day-to-day -day activities are. Um, mm. And yeah, I can show you the life of a comics artist slash YouTuber slash writer. Is, it, is that cool? Yeah, okay. The remnants of my slime video. And I'm not sure people really like it because they probably think it's a bit clickbaity, but I just, I wanted to play with slime because if you've watched that video, you know that I did a, like a big kind of illustration. Yeah, but now I've got all this leftover slime. Blech. And I don't know what to do with the illustration. As usual, I'm like, Oh yeah, I've got these. <laughs> I have my paper illustrations here and they're kind of, everyone's gonna cringe, but they're like breaking because I don't really have any frames. I would like to frame those two because I really like those. I think I wanna do a paper challenge soon again. And then these ones are okay. Like I'm not a huge fan of them. I liked them, but maybe I'll give them to my patrons or something. It's one of those things where it's like, it's one of those things where you get attached to certain artworks, but other artworks you kind of just, you do them to learn something and then you're like, nee, I don't want this anymore. So that's my thoughts on a couple of those. I don't know. Maybe I like the Clint one because I really like Clint, so that would make sense. But yeah, today I got up. Time to do some work. So I filmed all that stuff like a couple of weeks ago and then didn't continue vlogging. It doesn't make sense. I'm the worst vlogger in the world, I'm aware. I just think that it's been a crazy couple of weeks and just trying to keep up with the Kickstarter, like um, marketing it and doing different stuff for it and trying to get all the work finished for when I have to send stuff up to the printers has been pretty hectic, as well as trying to do videos and stuff. I did a paper art video last week and I really liked the way that that turned out. So um, you guys might have seen it probably if you're watching this vlog, because this is less interesting than that. But it's a paper art art illustration that I did and it's of Emily is burning. I really like the way that turned out so I added it as the print for the Kickstarter. It seemed to get a pretty good reaction so I thought well if people like this then yeah I'll, I'll let them have a copy of it. It makes sense doesn't it? Sorry about the lighting in this room it's pretty dark. I'm in my studio slash spare bedroom and there's just this tiny window but it doesn't let any light in so I'm just like it's really good for the light box, but that's about it. Otherwise, it just hurts your eyes on the computer. So it's an ironing board back there because I'm a professional YouTuber. Living my best life. So today I was cleaning in the morning to feel like good. I, I have to have a sort of clean space. I'm not very a, a very clean person and I find it hard to clean and keep on top of it, but want it to be clean. So I cleaned all that this morning and that was good. And now I feel like whew, better, you know what I mean? Like when it stuff's dirty and it just starts weighing down on you. And yeah, so that's done. We're gonna head out to my parents in a couple of hours because my sister is visiting from the UK. She lives in the UK. I'm gonna go see her and have dinner and stuff. Pretty much a resting day. That's why I'm doing a bit of a vlog today because to make this vlog a little bit more interesting for you guys. That's right, I care about you. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm gonna get to work on the comic and you'll probably see some footage from that. I'm not sure yet. I don't know what this is. It's a giant spot. I'm apologizing for it right now. Where has my fire gone? I lost the will to hold on. I, I fade away. I let my love die and I walked away. I let my love die and I looked away from the last of my home. Hey guys, so we're at my parents' house now and we decided to stay the night because our car is broken. And we're pretty sure that we're gonna have to buy a new one, which is really annoying. So my dad had to come get us and now we're gonna stay the night because we can't get back without the car because it's quite far away. But yeah, staying the night in this room. So whatever, gonna do some drawing now I think and just chill here and relax because it's kind of stressful when you know you have to spend a lot of money on something and it's annoying. <laughs> 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 
crown like that than I didn't notice. How do you lose? How do you lose? Ow! No one needs. You're gonna get in the pool today. Hey, so I thought this would be a good place to do a sort of Q&A session. I've done some drawing and I feel a little bit better, so I'm going to look at some of your questions and answer them. I asked on Instagram for some questions this afternoon, so I was thinking like, I'm going to get, no one's going to ask me anything, but I got quite a few questions, so that's pretty good. Um, Tomato Droplets asked, why did you decide to make a horror comic? Um, the reasons that I've decided to do it is because I've always kind of liked horror and as a genre in general, and I've always had an idea that I kind of want to dabble in telling a story with horror elements. For a year before I made the horror comic, I was making like really happy, joyful type comics. So it just, I think it was just something completely different. I felt like just going for it and doing it. I don't know why I chose then or this time to make it. I think I just, I just got a spark of inspiration and thought, yep, I'm gonna do it. And I went for it. Amy Howard asks, who's your favorite Disney character? I actually don't know. There's so many that I really like. I like the genie, I like the funny ones, and I also like like the baddies who are done really well. For instance, Hades, I really like him, he's funny. Um, Spindly Shanks says, how do you decide on a color scheme? Yours are always gorgeous, but I always find mine gaudy. Well, firstly, thanks very much. Secondly, I don't, uh, this sounds really obnoxious, but I don't actually know how I come up with color schemes. I don't know if it's something that I've just, from practicing a lot, have just inherited, like knowing what looks good. But I remember in A-levels, when I did my A-level in art, we studied the color wheel a lot, and we did a lot of like color scheme work then. So I think if you study like the color wheel and find out like what works with what, you kind of get it ingrained into your system a little bit. I've always just, I think that's the one thing that I've always been oh, quite good at and other things I've really had to work hard on. So I know that's a pretty rubbish answer, but yeah, I guess just studying the color wheel, you can go online and look at color schemes that you like and maybe you can start learning to use them. Always maybe limit your color palette is always a good idea because sometimes if you use a few colors that go well together and then you add just like one extra color that doesn't really work, it can kind of mess up the whole scheme a little bit sometimes. Same person, Spindly Shank says, I cannot draw hands, help. Um, I've had uh, like so many issues drawing hands and I always go through a process of being able to draw hands and then being unable to draw hands. So what I do is when I'm struggling with it, I look at how other artists draw hands how they express movement or shape. I look at how, um, I look at anatomy of hands. So I actually look at like medical science hands and draw them and draw from reference, draw them over and over and over again until you get kind of the grip of it. And I always think a trick for me is like the thumb is, you always have to learn that the thumb is very far down. There's always like a notch and then a thumb and then another notch and then fingers. <laughs> I know that sounds pretty stupid, but in my head, I'm like, yeah, that that works. Mm. I, hope, I hope I'm answering these questions right. This is the first time I've ever done a Q&A, by the way, so hopefully it's not too stupid or cringy. Um, somebody else, uh, I can't pronounce your name. I think it's Skyrim Tet. Skyrimet? I don't know, I'm sorry. Um, biggest inspiration and favorite color schemes? Blah. I think 
My biggest inspiration for comic -y stuff is probably Katie Shy. You can look her up. Um, I remember what, looking at her stuff and absolutely loving like her short web comics, like date slice of life stuff and falling in love with that kind of genre. Other people, I like Vera Boskull who did Anya's Ghost. I love a lot of people. I get, I get really inspired by people that I know as well. Like if I see an artist that I'm friends with who's doing great work, I, I really get inspired by that. And it, I think there's loads of inspirations out there that we don't necessarily pin, can pinpoint, but they all collectively add to you. Everything we see affects us. So I, I would say like those two for comic-y stuff, Van Gogh and Klimt for Van Gogh and Klimt for fine arty stuff. And I hope that helps. I'll probably think of like 500 other more inspirational artists that I've been inspired by by the time that I finished this video, but Soz. Ruth Young Art asks, any tips for writing lengthier comics? I'm currently trying to write one and finding it tricky. I think that it's kind of, it is hard depending on the on the project but if you're writing something to be long then I think you have to keep in mind what the end, end the final outcome is and try not to write yourself into a corner so say if your your character goes from A to B so you have to have the setup and then the conflict and then the development and then the conclusion the final outcome which resolves the conflict so if you think of that sense like of the free structures of the story then that can help you plan it out and as basic as it is the whole old method of beginning middle and end really helps a lot sometimes especially if you're like i don't know how this is going to end you you just find yourself writing into nothingness whereas if you know this character in the end is going to end up with this boyfriend and they're going to have saved the world and they're going to have killed the bad guy in this situation you kind of know the path the map on which way to go and all the added extra in between is just fun stuff that you can um, experiment with your character and continue that. I hope that helps. It is super tricky writing a comic and I always think like I need an idea and then if I'm writing straightforward as in I write with no ending it's kind of tr tough and I've done that before. Um, I did that for my graphic novel a little bit because I always had the beginning story in my head and I never knew how it was going to end but I remember one day just going out for a walk and just listening to music and being inspired by the music and just thinking of the ending like suddenly and I was like that's a great idea. Walking and listening to music definitely helps a lot. Obviously and totally aware asks what art supplies have you always wanted to try but scares you. I think I've always wanted to try oils but they just terrify me because I think like the whole fact that they take I don't know is it days and days to dry and stuff like that I know I'll just get it everywhere I'll ruin all my art supply but yeah I definitely wanted to try oils because I think you can get a really nice effect with them and I probably will try them one day but no they terrify me. Fierce Artorio? God, I'm so sorry. Thea Artorio asks, how long did it take you to find your own art style? Well, I've kind of said this before that I think I don't really have an art style, but lots of people have told me that I have, like they would find my work recognizable. So I guess I kind of do. I'm always experimenting with different styles though, because I think I tend to get a little bit tired of um, like a certain way of doing stuff. I always try to experiment and do different things. So I guess in that sense, that's my style. So I don't really know how to answer this question because I don't know if I have a style for sure, but I guess I feel comfortable enough to sit down and just draw something without feeling like I don't know what I'm doing. So I guess in that sense, I kind of have an art style. And I think what I did was just look at other artists a lot, be inspired by other people, draw a lot, um, find techniques that you like using, like cross hatchings, for instance, say that you happen upon that technique and you like it and it can be part of your style, then you can contribute that into other pieces that you do in the future. Sophia asks, who's your favorite artist? I have no idea. I honestly have no idea. There's so many. I think my favorite artists have to be people that are continuing to do great work. This is kind of similar to who's inspired me, but if I have friends who are amazing artists or even people who are trying to make art and doing what they love then that's pretty inspirational I think and I like that so I have a lot of people that I follow on Instagram I like Perth Fleur 
I don't know, I've never said their names out loud. I like Helga Kala. Hey Kala. She just recently did her book. Loads of people, obviously Dina and Zanfi and Casey and everybody and my friends. And yeah, I think I just, I like to go onto Instagram and just follow a load of people that I kind of like the style of. It's hard to pinpoint who your favorite artist is. I think I definitely, I suck at definitive answers. I'm always unsure of like, what's, if somebody's like, what's your favorite this? I'm like, I have no idea. Cause people have always asked me like, what's your favorite color? And I'm like, I like all the colors. <laughs> I definitely don't have like a favorite. Um, it's really tough for me. Cry a little tear for me guys. Yeah, so I never have a definitive answer. And this is probably like the worst Q and A ever because People usually have, um, know and make up their minds about things that they like, but no, I don't. I flicker, I'm really fickle, and I'll like one, one thing a lot one moment and then be like, actually, I don't like this anymore, so, yeah. Presto Paints asks, what's in what inspires you to, what inspires you most? Okay. Presto Paint asks, what inspires you most to create? Hmm. I think just being able to dive into like a different world and explore that. I think life can be so mundane sometimes that when it's boring or you feel like low or down or whatever, then you have this place that you can just draw or write or do whatever about and it's in your head and it's imaginary and you just, it's kind of an escape really obviously and I think that really inspires me like if I just want to create something it's amazing to know that I've made this from my head and it's something that I've done for myself like from nothingness so that pretty much inspires me a lot. I also think having a YouTube channel has really helped me to create a lot more pieces that I wouldn't usually have done in the past because I know there's been a couple of times like for instance paper art challenge filling a sketchbook in a day, stuff like that I would not have done before, like just sitting alone and doing it because I never just thought to do that. But now it's like, oh, I wanna make a video, I wanna, what's an idea? And then I think of these ideas and I do them and it's really helped motivate me to boost my um, artistic goals and different things. So, and hopefully I've leveled up quite a lot from being able to draw like every day. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. Marie asks, what are your tips on staying motivated until you finish your comic? This one is tough because there's so many times that I was like, I can't do this. I feel like I'm giving up because um, I've wanted to do it, obviously. And there's been days when I've absolutely loved working on it and it's been a pure joy and I've been so lucky. But then there's been other days where it's just slow and you think, when you're trying to figure out the story or a thumbnail or something you're not sure or something's intimidating you, it's hard to continue. But I think before I have finished a graphic novel, so knowing that I have done that gives me the confidence to know that I could do it again. And having a finished project in your hand is like an undescribable feeling. It's just such a cool thing. And having this thing in your hand and being, and being able to show people, flip through it and look at it and see what you think about it like years later is such a good feeling. So I always think of that and try and push myself. And obviously I know now that a lot of people are counting on it. Again, YouTube helped me a lot because you guys were lo looking at my stuff, listening to my vlogs and watching all the footage and commenting on that you like the art style and things. I think posting on social media is a big help because people are expecting stuff from you. So if you suddenly stop posting, they might be like, hey, why haven't you done this? And then you feel like, oh yeah, I should do that. I think that's a big factor in it. And also I think as well, you just have to try, I always say this, just continue finding the enjoyment and doing what you love. You started making a comic because you love making comics, right? So what's changed except the fact that you have to put a little effort in, you know what I mean? So just slowly, climb that mountain or you know grind away at doing those pages or those panels and just don't be so hard on yourself take breaks and enjoy the process that's all i can say um i think that's basically all the questions and i'm sorry if that went on for too long or not long enough but i hope that this was a good first q a for you guys and i hope that you got to know me a little bit better i'm sorry if i can't always find definitive answers to questions because um a fickle bee but I hope that I helped you in any way. I think what I'm gonna do now is either sign off or just continue vlogging the day here at my parents because I always like seeing other people's vlog styles and I think it's gonna be fun here. My family are here, they're all playing Monopoly 
outside, I was like, I don't want to play that because I was in a grump. So <laughs> bit playing Monopoly in a grump is not going to be good for anyone. So yeah, that's it. And now we're just going to have some dinner and maybe go for a swim and just chill out for the rest of the day. I'll sign off now in case I don't see you again. But thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe for more content and I will see you next time. Bye. Just come home to a little cat. You comfy there? Huh? <laughs> Just wanted to let you guys know that tomorrow night I'm going to be playing Jackbox Party with the guys over on Gibraltar Gamers tomorrow night and there'll be some free spaces so you guys can join in and play with us too if you like and we can hang out and have some fun. The link is in the description for the channel down below so come join us. I just want to say thanks to the $12 tier patrons and your number one in my heart. That is Babbitt, Erica, James and Cecile, Steph and Lee, Tim, Tom and Megaea. Thanks for being my patrons and if you would like a shout out at the end of my videos then check out my patron down below.